Hey everybody, uh, this is the next part in um, my Kubernetes cluster uh, tutorial. Um, the last video we made a little container and we ran it, um, we ran the Docker container on our local machine. So the next thing I want to do is push this up to Amazon and then actually uh, deploy it to our cluster that we just made. Um, so uh, if, if you don't remember what we did, just go watch the previous video, I'll link to it below. Um, but we made this little Docker container and now we need somewhere to push it. Uh, just like if you're using Git, um, you have like GitHub or GitLab or whatever you use, Bitbucket, um, you want to push the code to a, to a central repository for other people to look at it. Um, I don't really want other people to look at this container, um, but I need Amazon to be able to pull this container. So, so me and Amazon need a shared place um, for uh, me to place these containers. So the AWS product for that is uh, AWS Container Service, um, which we will set up now. So I have that up. Um, it's a service um, in this big, long, huge list of AWS products. Um, EC2 Container Service, uh, Elastic Compute. Uh, I think that's what ETC stands for. Um, I could be wrong. What does EC2? What does EC2 stand for? I think it's Elastic Compute. Elastic Compute Generator 2. Okay, I was right. Um, anyway, that's what we want to use. And what I'm going to do is create a repository. So this is kind of like a, a Git repository. Um, it's a place to put my stuff. So I'm going to call this uh, Brightside Studio. Spelled that right. Cool. And now it's going to give me... Um, directions on how to push this up. Much like when you create a new Git repository, it's like, you know, put your origin here and then push here and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to do that. So first I have to log in. I have to uh, authenticate. Uh, I'm the only one that can push to this ECR. Uh, no one else can. Um, so I will do that now. Oh, I, <laughs> I did a little trick. Um, I wrapped this in a uh, dollar sign um, parentheses um, so I can log in. Um, if you don't do that, uh, you'll have to copy and paste the output. Actually, I'll just do that. Um, this is going to print out a big long thing, and what you got to do is uh, execute this Docker login here. And it'll say login succeeded. Great. Um, okay, so that succeeded, and now what we're going to do is we are going to build um, this container again. Remember, we called it example two. Um, well, uh, Docker has an interesting naming convention based on the name of the um, container. That's the repository it's going to go to. Um, we'll get into that in a second. But anyway, I'm going to rebuild this Docker container, giving it a different name of Brightside Studio. Uh, we built one in the last video. Uh, we just didn't give it Brightside Studio. So the next thing we want to do is uh, we're going to tag the thing we just made, Brightside Studio, um, to have this big, long name. Uh, remember, that's, uh, I just said like a second ago, it, it matters, the Docker container matters uh, what name it is, because then it knows what ECR or Docker registry to go to. Uh, so we are going to tag it with my um, ECR name here, which is randomly generated for me when I made this uh, uh, registry. And then um, the way this works is it says Docker tag, this big long name, um, and then it says colon latest, uh, colon latest, that's the version. I don't really want to give it the latest because that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you shouldn't use latest because uh, latest keeps changing. <laughs> so I don't really, if I have two latest, which one's latest, it'll just move that tag over and over and over again. So I'm going to call this V1. Um, okay, so now I have uh, that V1 container there, and then I'm going to push this container. Um, and it, again, it's not latest, it's V1. Uh, and this is going straight to ECR. So I want to do this. Again, this is much like a git commit. Um, it's going to my repository. And then what we're going to do is configure our Kubernetes cluster to pull from this repository. Um, the smaller the images, uh, the quicker this goes. Also, uh, you can see it's doing a bunch of things here. Like, why, is it, why does it have multiple pushes? Um, well, uh, Docker containers are layered. Um, and uh, two Docker containers, um, let's say I have a version 1 and a version 2, uh, and the version 2 only changes a couple files. Um, well, if I do my Docker file right, um, this thing will say, well, I already have all of these layers. Like, you only change these two files, and a push will be real quick. 
um, because what it'll do is it'll diff version 1, version 2, and it says, I have all the stuff from version 1, you just change a couple files, uh, the push will be really quick. So it's like a, like a, um, like a git diff uh, when you're pushing Docker files. So the, this first push is obviously very large, um, but the next pushes you push up are quicker. Um, while this is pushing, I'll just kind of talk about that first. Okay. So each of these um, words, or each of these commands, are a layer, basically. And uh, this one has a couple layers that I can't really see. But if I were to add a layer here, um, it's going to say, well, I've done these three layers, and I didn't change anything here. Um, it's just going to uh, push this new layer up. It's, it's pretty handy. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so um, we'll wait for this to be done and uh, then we'll start pushing stuff to the cluster.